everyone, we are back, this time without it being an update video, and by we, of course, I mean with me as always is Corey. Say hi, Corey. Hey, how's it going, guys? And this time we're actually going to be playing this demo that the folks at Neofid recently released for the project they're going to be working on next after they're done working on Damon Claw for the Mega Drive, which is our game. So bias warning here, while we have no <laughs> financial incentive for how well this game, Demons of Asterberg DX, does, we have been working with these guys for the last many months making the Mega Drive version of our game, Damon Claw. So so to compensate for that potential bias, maybe sometimes when I'm tempted to compliment this game as I'm playing the demo, maybe I'll just pretend to hate it a little bit. So <laughs> hopefully that'll be entertaining and interesting for you guys. But also, Corey and I are both longtime veteran pixel artists for games and game designers. So we are certainly also, while I'm playing through this, going to be mentioning some things about how and why certain decisions may have been made in the graphics and the gameplay department. And maybe even some ways, keep in mind this is a work in progress still, like they've only just begun this. So potential ways they could improve some aspects of the communication to the player and that kind of thing. So uh, without any more chit chat, or there will be more, but I mean, <laughs> let's dive right into the gameplay. And I have not been playing the game, uh, uh, this demo, a ton yet. I actually did order the GBA version on their Indiegogo campaign, which by the time this video is released, it'll be in like its last day or right around yeah, there. Yeah, I, I did as well. Yeah, yeah so... I, I got like, I want to save most of the experience for when I actually get the game and I, I can just, you know, sit through and play through the whole thing and really pay attention. So I'm not going to be masterful at this demo, but I think I can get through it. We'll see what happens. So let's see. Yeah, that was a nice kind of play on the uh, world map of, uh, what was that, Super Mario World on the Super Yeah, Nintendo? they have a nice uh, view of that on the on the campaign page of it rotating. It's very cool. Yeah, I yep. like that, that look. Yep, so super early on, like I've got to say, it's already clear how many enhancements they're making for the GBA version over the original Mega Drive version they made, where mm -hmm. there's more color enhancements, they're doing those kind of Super Nintendo-y things, transparency effects, and uh, but going to normal standard gameplay design, did you notice how right from the beginning there's no enemy so you could learn your basic controls, and those little collectible, little glowy orb things, they're guiding you where to go. That's right. like really yes. classic gameplay design where you build the tutorial right into the beginning of the game without it being a tutorial specifically, you know what I mean? So pretty yeah, elegant, does, yeah. It does a pretty good job of guiding you in to, you yeah, know, in exactly. getting into the gist of the gameplay. Yeah, and speaking of that, here's a simple, uh, you know, it doesn't need a bunch of text. You're just blocked here right. and it tells you what to do to proceed. I've been practicing with the scarecrow. Now that, <laughs> that exclamation point, <laughs> they've given me the perfect target to pretend to hate it. Obviously this is not a finished game, <laughs> but that literally looks like the placeholder art I make when we develop Damon Claw, except it's not radioactive green. Right. <laughs> but yeah, otherwise, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but anyway, the, the rest of the game is looking very polished already. But, uh, so... Well, at least oh. it's just an exclamation point, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look at this garbage! How you fancy could... does it need to be? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Look at this garbage! You could hack away at this thing forever, and it doesn't yeah. get destroyed. Lame! Just kidding. <laughs> Getting you used to the idea of if you see moving platforms, you should explore them, because it will almost certainly lead to some little hidden bonus or somewhere you need to go. <laughs> That's a nice almost Muppety uh, afraid face. Yeah, yeah. So I appreciated the yeah. character, you know. Like yeah, kind exactly. Of like, oh, they're, they're attacking and yep. you, know, you gotta help us, yeah. I would say some nitpicky thing that I think would make the game better is if you're going to do that exaggerated a face when he's running up to you, the fact that he suddenly looks so calm <laughs> when he stops and talks to you, like not in the right. portrait, like you could easily keep his eyes open and his eyebrows up when he's talking to you so that he still looks upset. Because watch how funny it looks, he's talking to you calmly for as long as it takes 
for you to press through the buttons. And then he goes running screaming again like he's afraid of you, watch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh sure, oh sure. Here we go. Another game encouraging, uh, you know, violent conflict. How about how about we actually be creative and have a uh, peaceful resolution with zombie button? You know what I mean? Like, All right. Yeah. <laughs> I will say the the yeah. cartoony expression of the guy, uh, the NPC guy. Yeah. What, like there is there is a level of cartoony, like sort of zaniness and abstraction yeah. to the enemy design as well, the sprite design. So. Yeah. Uh, just overall the art style, but I, I, I yeah. kind of, I do like that. I, I, yeah. I find the enemy art, you know, it's like we're doing a, a very different sort of thing with mm. Dame and Claw, and it's it's a little refreshing to see something a little yeah. more, you know, and, and most, I guess. Exactly, and most of the current Metroidvania games, even though their quality is exceptionally high, uh, Last Faith, Blasphemy are two of the ones that really pop into my mind. They're gorgeous, but they're super gothic, super serious, dark, realistic, you know? Right, what I mean? yeah. I, so I, this I, is kind of refreshing to have a little more playful, cartoony style. Exactly, yeah. That like We see a lot of that, the gothic Castlevania, yeah. like very taking itself way too seriously kind of games. Yeah. And this, this is like uh, totally different than that. I, I you know, I, I enjoyed it, yeah. Uh, I, I mean... What is this? What are we controlling? Muppets? This is garbage. Is this for a three-year-old? <laughs> but anyway, so uh, going back to uh, an actual critique or criticism, this right here is what's called a blind drop. And I'm almost right. certain yeah. what happened here is this is a very enhanced port that they're working on of the first game they made for Mega Drive. And they've taken and they've enhanced the graphics from the Mega Drive version, but the Mega Drive has a larger screen. So what you're seeing here is because of that, the character is larger on screen and you see less of the world. And this right. almost certainly was not a blind drop on the Mega Drive screen, but now it is. So I would highly Probably recommend something them. slightly overlooked in producing the demo. That, yeah, exactly. That, yeah, that, that, that they, you know, when testing, it's just yeah. like. You just walk off this ledge. You don't even exactly. think about it, probably. Because they're used to it. They know, they've they <laughs> played the game a million. Exactly right. So just some history for you guys. In gameplay design, blind drops are typically a sign of lazy game design, where the designer is making their levels in a level editor, and they're not going through and carefully testing to make sure there's not blind drops. And they're forgetting, hey, just just because I designed a level and I know everywhere to go and I know where it's safe to drop, if a new player can't see there's ground down there, they're going to be afraid to just drop blindly, right? Right. So, but it's the difference is... Really, you saw this, yeah. oh, like, this game, like, I think this is one of the only ver there might be just a couple of spots they yeah. actually avoid it pretty well in this demo yeah. amazingly yeah. considering the screen size yeah this was a huge problem back in the old mega drive days of platformers yeah. back then like they yep. would you would just be jumping and you'd oh, see look nothing at that. but background yep oh they see, already implemented one of the classic uh compensations for a blind that's... drop yep yeah. so that's great that was one of the things I was going to recommend. I just discovered this too accidentally. But, like, so that's one thing to handle it so that if there needs to be a blind drop, it gives the player a way to find yeah. out. And I, I'm guessing that will be in the manual, but... Uh, it could even be yeah. as simple as, I mean, instead of doing complex camera additional stuff, like just yeah. for these certain ledges, Right. You could just add another little environment element there. That's exactly. Up that so, just indicates, hey, there's some ground. I mean, there is a tree over there, but it, that's not. That's too. It's far too far away. away. There yeah, could be yeah, a yeah. deadly drop in between. So that's exactly the two points I was going to make. They've already established to the player that the blue orbs guide you as where you should go. So just right. put a blue orb or two going straight down, right? Yeah. That'll let you know. Okay, I should follow that. That's safe to go. But the other thing. If you just put a tree or a bush there that you can see the top of, it can't be floating in space, so obviously that's not a blind drop, it's safe. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So those are the two ways to do it without changing the map. The other question is, is the drop necessarily that high for a good reason? Like, I drop down, I think the reason they did it is they don't want you to be able to get back up there. 
So this is a circumstance where if that was the case, if they don't want you to be able to get out of my way, I'm talking. Um, but if they don't want you to uh, be able to get back up there, they need it to still be that high. So they should use the blue orbs and a plant or a tree that are visible there so that the player has no doubt it's safe to drop down there and they should drop down there. Aside but, from yeah. that, like, like aside from those couple of spots in this though, yeah. where it is the blind drop, I, I will say like I, I was a little scared at first when I saw this. I was like, man, the character's really big, and like yeah. this is a more smaller screen. Yeah. But the camera's actually done pretty well overall. Yeah. Like it, it does a pretty smooth job of following the player, yeah. uh, as you would see on a lot of classic GBA games. Yeah. And, and and that made me sort of appreciate that they kept the character a little bigger. Because yeah. when you think about the small GBA screen, exactly. like that, that would look a lot nicer. You know? yeah. So, yeah. Yep, that was very typical when they would make a port of a game to GBA, is they would be careful with their camera scrolling. You could see we've, we did this in Damon Claw as well where when you turn left or right, the camera shifts over yeah. to uh, let you see more ahead of you than behind you to give you that reaction time that you need. I don't remember if the Mega Drive version of Demons of Asterborg did that. It probably did not need to. Like, if it was centered, there's still enough reaction time because Demons of Asterborg is a more traditional Metroidvania. There's not, like, the requirement, typically, for super fast reactions like there is with Demon Claw. Well, I liked the little extra builders running away. Yeah, too. definitely. Just that little touch uh, didn't didn't have to spend a lot of time on Oops. it. You know? yeah. And and some of this little town stuff is nice looking pixel art wise. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's nice a, to look at. Very nice, clean. That they really have done a great job already enhancing the colors uh, over the Mega Drive version. Let's, let's keep progressing. And then you saw they teased us with this uh, moving platform that they already trained us as something we should follow to find mm -hmm. treasures and things like that. So let's see where that leads us. Nice. See, and you got the blue orbs guiding you downward. That all works well. So what I should be doing, there's a nice dash move that they also told us to do uh, earlier in the game. And uh, with the zombies, what I should be doing after the first or second hit is dashing through to the other side. Um, right. Yeah. But yeah, I'm getting lazy because I'm, yeah. I'm paying more attention to the graphics and uh, Yeah, stuff I like wasn't that. like, I, I didn't quite adapt to the dash uh, other than like using it for platforming. Yeah, purposes. exactly. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, I suppose that is true. They could have done something where they made it more obvious that that would be a huge benefit in the combat early on. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's. I, I guess. I mean, I'm fine. Like, if if somebody just wants to discover it, but oh. it, it for me, I, I guess that's my thing. Is like, in a classic game sense, it's yeah. it's always counterintuitive in my mind to like do a dash right into or try to go through an enemy or something yeah yeah unless that, there's some obvious reason that i can like i'm i'm energized yeah. i'm energized and i can go through them as an attack but right but yeah that so, dodge like, thing it was so in, i think my own classic yeah. gameplay instincts prevented yeah. me from wanting to do that or it, try exactly it. there were like a very small handful of classic games that had introduced that mechanic but if you had not played those games it's it's not just going to be an instinct at all. It's the opposite. Right. You're like, oh yeah, I'll slam into this guy. Like the idea yeah. is, it's a dodge that kind of sidesteps them. Yeah, yeah. yeah like it's I, good I gameplay, a... but it's yeah. not instinctual. So they could make they could emphasize that more and introduce a first enemy that you really like. Imagine a first enemy with a shield or something like that. Where it makes sense, you can't just hack away at them, and then oh, like fine. you know, yeah. a little text or something could say you know you have to dash through to get to attack them from behind or something like that. But anyway, uh, uh, let's see what's Skeletor telling us here. Maybe a, maybe a zombie mime that's yeah. putting up an invisible uh, you know wall or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm lost and struggling to regain my memory. What about you? Uh, want to surface? I have something that could help you, but I need you to do me a favor. A fragment of my memory is near here. I can feel it. Maybe I should be doing voices. Find it and bring it to me. <laughs> Find it and bring it to me. I'll 
let's see what I can do. And in the meantime, no funny business. I'm not going anywhere. I like that guy's uh, attitude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. His dialogue is uh, is uh, again. It's it's a nice it's a nice refreshing bit of levity like it's not taking itself super serious same thing with the graphics yeah. it's cohesive that way i should say also like we've just been talking over it but the music is very very good i i will say that yeah like there were times that i got a little frustrated dying and stuff on spikes yeah. or things like that but the music actually kind of made me want to try again you know it, you yeah. know I mean? it kind of keeps you going uh yeah. despite you know yeah. any, any failures you might have along the way yeah absolutely Yeah, this was a cool mechanic here, the uh, breakable uh, supports to uh, kind of change the terrain a little for some platform, little introducing a little bit of puzzle in there. That's unfortunate, those teasing me coins. Oh, I, I got them with a sword swing, that was interesting. Yeah, I, I like those Oops. slashable support things. Oops, that's what I said, better hurry up. <laughs> That's right. Some really classic Metroidvania uh, platforming hazards going on. Right. Yep. Again, the blue orbs are guiding me where to go. Oops, and I'm doing a terrible job at wall jumping here. Uh, yeah, there's, you can't drop down off of these platforms. So onward and upward. Another switch. Nice use of uh, some of the uh, GBA's translucency effects, much like the Super Nintendo. Yeah. And let's see. What to I do, do as another little nitpick, when you have to, like, vertically transition between maps whether yep. it's up or down like i do wish there was like a little arrow or something that telling you that that's where you needed to go yeah, sometimes exactly, it's, yeah. it's just kind of the edge and you're not really sure you know there's yep. nothing special about it yeah yeah in fact uh when i was doing some level designs for a much more intentionally kitty platforming game I think it was like Spy Kids for the GBA or something like that. I designed a few of the bonus levels for. I actually combined both things. I used the collectibles to guide people where, the, where to go, but to really emphasize a certain thing, I literally made an arrow out of the collectible things. Kind of like how they spelled out words in Super right. Mario 3. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Nice. Let's continue onward. Yeah, it, it was... It was... I remember back older phone days too like making platformers for those like uh, vertical yep. aligned screens and stuff yep. you had to you had to really do a lot to communicate to the player where to go sometimes oh absolutely you yeah. can see a lot you know what i mean oh so yeah in general we're not saying much about the graphics but there's not much to uh certainly not much to complain about they're very nice in general there is a nitpicky thing i want to get to that hopefully they can uh you know i'll talk to the guys at neofid this is probably something they have planned too uh, we'll see when we get there so this is some really good gameplay communication where you have to introduce a mechanic uh, a gameplay mechanic to the player before you start making it more dangerous, right? right. So here we've got this water thing and uh, this guy, the player character's name is Gareth and you know, <laughs> this is the plot. He's cursed with buoyancy. <laughs> you have to beat the game to, uh, to uh, you know, to what, what do they call that? Dispel the curse of buoyancy that the evil demon put on you. So you can't swim downward. So in order to actually navigate this water, you have to use your inertia from a fall. So the higher you fall from, the uh, deeper you go at the beginning, and you have to yeah. use that to your advantage. So if I just step down here, I might not, like, so at first it's, this little drop is enough, but then later drops, you need to do it from a higher and a higher position. See, I can't do it from here. Right, yeah. And also from here, I think, yeah. So what I need to do is jump up here like this, and then I have enough downward inertia 
See, so here's me using the dodge the way I'm supposed to use it. Right, yeah. There we go. Uh, so this is one thing that, that I wish they would tweak about communicating with the player. We've all ber already been jumping on square blocks like this quite a lot to get up to higher places. And this very much looks like I should be able to jump on this block, even though they darkened it a bit, to right. get up there. But I can't. What I can do is I can break it and reveal the water. That water, yeah. I'm sure, is the, that water needs to be brightened, at least the top of it. They should use a new sprite if they have to, of opaque, to make that nice and bright, to make it super obvious that's not in the background and you could jump on that water. But anyway, it boosts you up there, which is kind of fun, actually, the way it kind of springs you up. Yeah, even if it wasn't like a block, but it was... I mean, I, I exactly. understand that they are porting a game that existed, so maybe yeah. they don't want to change too many visual yeah. designs of it. But, yeah. you know, like, to, to me, that you, that could work as many different things. Yeah. Something, or, you know, blocking the water. Stuff. Or just make it a shorter, pointier block that doesn't brick, that, like, stone, that it doesn't look like you could land on it, and it looks right. like, yeah. you know, and, like, make it look breakable, make it have cracks in it, things like that, to communicate to the player, that's breakable, it's blocking something, but I can't jump on it to get up higher. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's pretty minor, that, like, Yo, once very you do nitpicky. learn it, it's, yeah, yeah. like, you're never gonna think that again. Yeah. That stand on it so and, and, i guess that, that's the one positive of exactly it. Yeah. and the, the first time i tried to jump on it and i couldn't go through i was so pissed off of course i hacked at it with my sword and then that <laughs> right. solved the problem yeah. that, that's the uh that's the classic uh you know classic thing just like i mean it's pretty much all you can do in the game right is you have a sword yeah. and you can jump and move yeah. around so <laughs> and, well, you do eventually get magic, of course. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which is coming up, I think. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, we're not far from it now, so I need a lot of inertia to get down there. So once again, reminding you of the mechanic, getting you better and better at it, because here is where it starts to get dangerous. Like I said. Ah. Oh, yep. Huh. There we go. I was too aggressive in my uh, horizontal movements I needed to go down and then over. So this is the really dangerous one. There we go. It's pretty tight. Wall jump. In a way, like, I, I kept thinking at first, it kept tricking me into... I was thinking like, oh, when I touch the spikes, I just completely die and I lose yeah. a life or something. Yeah, like, yeah, it just don't really resets lose a life. Yeah. And since you don't, it makes me... it, Like, usually, if it's not going to make me lose a life, you don't uh, want it resetting I, I your position. I would rather not restart somewhere. I yeah. Would just take a little bit of health and let me keep going, but that's my own. Yeah, you know, like that's one of those things. If you go with a certain gameplay mechanic, you can force the situation yeah. where you, as a game designer, you have to do certain things, right? So here you have a situation where a pro, you have a prolonged horizontal area of spikes that you're supposed to swim under, but you can't control your height when you're swimming. So if they just let you take a few points of damage but keep going, you'd have right. to swim through the spikes for like a second course, or two. I mean, I'm weird like yeah. that. Like I used to play so many classic like NES games and yeah. stuff where that was just a thing where you would just bounce off the spikes and you could just take somehow damage. manage to yeah. recover even if it wasn't intended by the exactly. game designers. Yeah. So the, I used to take yeah. weird advantage of things yeah. like that while playing. That's but, a critical, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a critical aspect of speedrunning, right? They call right. that a damage boost. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, that that's something we all learned was just a natural part of gameplay, or it became natural part of gameplay. But certain games over the years, I remember what was the other one? I think Gravity Circuit does that a lot. The yeah, yeah. fall on spikes and reset your position thing. I guess and, I guess if you yeah. want to say that. You know, in modern times for platformers, if people are more used to that, if modern platforming gamers, then, you know, I'm not going to be too picky about that sort of thing. Like, it yeah. is, again, these are little nitpick things for me. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not hypercritical. It is a pretty cool game. Like, I would have, oh, yeah. if I were younger, you know, because I, I had, like, a bunch of different Game Boys and versions of the GBA when I was young, and, uh, you know, I played all kinds of games like this, and this would have fit right in with yeah. those classic games, you know what I mean? And yeah. I, I, so, and, and remember, yeah. like, people, we can't fault this. This game is still in very early development, and obviously they spent, like, half of the development time so far on that exclamation point. Right. So, like, you know, they'll get to the other stuff eventually, you know? 
Plus, we just can't help ourselves to have these kind of conversations. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. We play. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, I wasn't reading the, uh, the dialogue out loud while uh, we were talking about this stuff, but... Uh, to thank him for getting back his memory, which was that, like, rolled-up scroll uh, earlier on. He gave us a magic ability, which uh, yeah, was this button here. So that was, this is a, a gate blocking us, but the magic allowed us to uh, trigger the switch there. So that be becomes an integral part of the gameplay. Um, at least for this level. I can't remember if in this game... I think you might lose the magic. Oops, I waited too long. Um, I think you might lose the magic uh, that you get in certain areas, and it gets replaced with other magics. I, I can't remember for sure. Right. Yeah. Which is actually pretty atypical for a Metroidvania. Uh, yeah, it's true. It's usually once you get a thing, you've got it forever. Yep. And then you've got a giant menu of things to toggle on and off, like <laughs> the Symphony of the Night. They get pretty crazy with that. Some of the things in Symphony of the Night I loved, like the, they they like had fun with the, that reality, with that fact that they um, uh, just had so many items. There was, uh, I don't know if you ever knew this, but the, oops, I did it upwards. So there we go. So you can use this magic to cut ropes at a distance, which becomes uh, really important for the later part of this area. Um, but in Symphony of the Night, there's. Uh, there's a pair of boots, I think they call them magic boots, but it, the description was discreetly makes you slightly taller. And they actually went through the trouble of programming it. I actually, like, paused the screen and recorded or something back in the day and verified they actually make you stand a pixel taller. <laughs> it's pretty incredible. I bet <laughs> they pulled that off with a really clever sprite scale or something. Where they they designed the sprite just right, where it, it wouldn't be noticeable if they stretched it or something like that. Yeah, I guess one, yeah, you know. Yeah, uh, it certainly could have been. Uh, you know, certainly there's a lot of uh, sprite power to go along. Um, yeah, yeah, and so, space. I mean, that, they yeah, could have put tons like, of art in that game, and it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, yeah they could have done a, a simple trick where the end of the sprite usually ends at the normal bottom of the heels, but then right. you can extend the spite, uh, sprite with that, just that one more pixel row of yep. the uh, the high heels. And then they and then just you programmatically just y uh, offset. shifted the whole You, you lift up. the player sprite one pixel on any platform. Yeah, exactly. That's probably how I would have done it, just assuming yeah. that the scaling uh, would have distorted, like, his, giving him a horse face or something, like, yeah, one yeah. pixel taller jaw or something weird. Um, let's see here. Yeah, they were already, like, sort of self-aware of, like, okay, yeah. we, we've got a million items in our game. You know? Yeah. But yeah, that, that one, like, really, uh, like, I organically discovered that one while playing, and it was really charming. Like, discreetly makes you slightly taller. But uh, the fact that it actually did, the fact that they went through that extra programming to do something that had no effect on gameplay whatsoever for a gag, I just really appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, this is awesome, using a kind of Mode 70 type technology to yep. get some uh, 3D stuff going in there. It looks really nice. Nicely done. I mean, pff, that's already been done before. God, you know? <laughs> yeah, so here we have another dead drop and a zombie trap. So this is this is, is actually a dangerous... I, I said dead drop, I meant blind drop. Right. But been playing, I've uh, been watching people play too much PUBG, Player Unknown's Battleground. What, I think there thing, are dead drops. Like, I noticed about the zombies, because uh, we're in this... I understand this is a sunset kind yep, of palette. environment yeah but it is pretty bright it still looks pretty bright outside here and yeah there's something about the zombies they look like they belong underground yeah they're dark environment yep. uh, the other enemy some of the other enemies aren't that way outside yeah and it's like i wish they were just a touch brighter or something as far as their palette goes but yeah absolutely that's again a minor nitpick i still uh, really enjoy the enemy design and the way they look and everything yeah, so, yeah. yeah absolutely I forget where I need to go for this. I thought I can make that drop. Am I just doing a bad job? There we go, yeah. Yeah, you got it, yeah. There we go. 
that's very yeah. slight. There, there we go. Okay. Yep, there comes another one. I've got to do some platforming. So earlier, while we were chatting, there were some blue orbs that guide you up here. Mm -hmm. um, over this way, apparently. Yeah, that is one of the downsides of, I would say, the coins or blue orbs or whatever to guide you. Yep. Is that once you if you yeah, yeah. Once, if you collected them and then you fail, then they're not there anymore. And yep. you know what I mean. Exactly. Like the second time around. So yeah, when you're still potentially trying to figure out the the right. trick or the map or whatever. I think we're approaching the end of the demo. You know, a, a way to fix that is you, you do a sequenced sort of coins, and you have to get them, like, once you get them all, you keep them. But if you don't get them all, then, you know what I mean? Something like <laughs> there's a, the final right. coin is at the end of the puzzle when you're safe. You yeah, know what exactly. I mean? Otherwise, they all reappear, and you can get them all again. That's, yeah, there's a little creative ways around that. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yep, oh, flashback. Oh, wow. Yep. The plot thickens. And while I, I, I never liked that, that pixely effect, it actually worked these fine on a, on a GBA screen. I oh, never did yeah, it in that context. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, in general, even especially for flashbacks and stuff, when you could make the memories, I would prefer a, prefer a fade crossed with like a wavy effect. Yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah, that's super. Yeah, they nitpicky. do have a neat wave thing going on with this, like yep. you know, mist or whatever mm. here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, classy stuff. Some really good, nice, very classic 16-bit uh, GBA and Super Nintendo style augmentation to the original Mega Drive version. They've also made improvements to the gameplay. I can't wait to get the full version where they've even added a uh, counterattack move. Uh, mm -hmm. to Gareth. Um, I, I've always loved that little extra bit of nuance and sophistication to combat that can really reward once you practice, once you're an experienced player, you can really play with more style. You know what I mean? Right. It's uh, much more gratifying. Nice. So that is adolescent Gareth who was mad at a demon and accidentally freed the demon when he tried to kill it. And, uh, yeah. He seems pretty upset with his giant mistake, so... He's on a mission to compensate for a foolish, uh, foolish, uh, you know, thing he did uh, as a child. Well, that's... I, I like that. I yeah, yeah, absolutely. A very classic way of giving the protagonist a connection. You know, yeah, exactly. Villain and everything, yeah. Yeah, and that's something you don't see that often, is kind of regret of a hero, a kind of self-redemption arc. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's pretty cool. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Boy, this guy really, he's uh, <laughs> gomo gomo no! He's, he's one step away from Monkey D. Luffy with that uh, expando stomach there. Yeah. I, I didn't, when I was playing, yeah. I didn't get this far. So yeah. I didn't see that guy. Oh, okay. You got close. Yeah, that was the <laughs> end of the demo. But yeah, nice beefy demo, uh, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my apologies if the chatting was not as interesting to you as we thought it was to us. Hopefully it was in interesting and entertaining. But uh, yeah, like give the demo a chance. Uh, we will provide a link to where you can download it and obviously to their Indiegogo, which is about to expire. And like I said, if you own either a GBA or a Neo Geo, they're making the Neo Geo version at the same time. Uh, right. You can uh, pre-order either of them, support their development of this game. And like I said, this is not just a simple port over to either of these two systems. They're across the board. They're better balancing the gameplay, adding features, and then clearly already this early on, they're lovingly upgrading the graphics to take special use to that particular system's abilities, which I really appreciate. Um, yeah. I mean, 
these guys are just trying to dazzle you with you know superficial <laughs> pixels. yeah superficial like it's a video game how are the visuals important Right. Yeah. But uh, anyway, we hope you enjoyed this very biased uh, sort of preview <laughs> or playthrough of the demo. And uh, we'll leave it there for this one. Thanks very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe if you're interested in games like this. And if you thought the footage that uh, Future Mike will have spliced in at the beginning of Damon Claw and just games like this in general, please do consider liking and subscribing to our channel. And we'll be back again with another video. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoy our content and want to keep up to date on our games, please leave a like and subscribe. Also, if you want to support our projects, consider becoming a patron. The link's in the description and we'll see you soon.